To thee we come, O Lord our God. And now, let us recite the second act of confession. I confess to Almighty God, one in the Holy Trinity, in the presence of the Blessed Virgin Mary, all the saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, that I have sinned in thought, word, and deed, by my fault, by my fault, by my own great fault. I ask the Blessed Mother Mary, all the saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy upon us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. May the Almighty and merciful Lord grant us pardon, absolution, and remission of our sins. May our Lord Jesus Christ absolve you, and with his authority vested in me by him, I absolve you of your sins. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. O oh God, you will again renew us. Show us your mercy, Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Take our sins away from us, Lord, so that we might enter the Holy of Holies with purified hearts through Christ our Lord. Amen. Praise you, servants of the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. Blessed is the name of the Lord, for thou art Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, it is now, and it shall be, for all the time, and amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God and the Father. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. 
All-knowing Father, your Son taught us to first seek his kingdom in all things, other things would be given to us. Help us to seek the riches of your truth and the way, wealth of your grace. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Would you proclaim the word? A reading from Amos the prophet. Hear this, you who trample upon the needy and destroy the poor of the land. When will the new moon be over you, you ask, that we may sell our grain and the, and the Sabbath? that we may display the wheat. We will diminish the ephah, add to the shekel, and fix our scales for cheating. We will buy the lonely, lowly for silver and the poor for a pair of sandals. Even the refuse of the wheat we will sell. The Lord has sworn by the pride of Jacob, never will I forget a thing they have done. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Gradual. You shall not keep two differing weights in your bag, one large and the other small. Nor shall you keep two different measures in your house, one large and the other small. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to Timothy. Beloved, first of all, I ask that supplications, prayers, petitions, and thanksgivings be offered for everyone, for kings and for all in authority, that we may lead a quiet and tranquil life in all devotion and dignity. This is good and pleasing to God our Savior, who wills everyone to be saved and to come to knowledge of the truth. For there is one God, there is also one mediator between God and men, the man Christ Jesus, who gave himself as ransom for all. This was the testimony at the proper time. For this I was appointed preacher and apostle. I am speaking the truth, I am not lying. Teacher of the Gentiles in faith and truth, it is my wish then that in every place the men should pray, lifting up holy hands without anger or argument. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thank you. Alleluia, alleluia. Alleluia, alleluia. Dispose of your treasure as the Most High commands, for that will profit you more than the gold. Alleluia, alleluia. Almighty and eternal God, who cleanse the lips of the prophet Isaiah with a burning coal, cleanse my heart and my lips through your gracious mercy, that I may worthily proclaim your holy gospel through Christ our Lord. Amen. May the Lord be in my heart and on my lips, that I may worthily proclaim his holy gospel. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. Luke. Jesus said to his disciples, A rich man had a steward who was reported to him for squandering his property. He summoned him and said, What is this I hear about you? Prepare a full account of your stewardship, because you can no longer be my steward. The steward said to himself, What shall I do? Now that my master is taking the position of steward away from me, I am not strong enough to dig, and I am ashamed to beg. I know what I shall do, that when I am removed from the stewardship, they may welcome me into their homes. He called in his master's debtors one by one. To the first he said, How much do you owe my master? 
He replied, 100 measures of olive oil. He said to him, here is your promissory note. Sit down and quickly write one for 50. Then to another, the steward said, and you, how much do you owe? He replied, 100 cores of wheat. The steward said to him, here is your promissory note. Write one for 50. And the master commended that dishonest steward for acting prudently. For the children of this world are more prudent in dealing with their own generation than are the children of light. I tell you, make friends for yourselves with dishonest wealth, so that when it fails, you will be welcomed into eternal dwellings. A person who is trustworthy in very small matters is also trustworthy in great ones. And the person who is dishonest in very small matters is also dishonest in great ones. If therefore you are not trustworthy with dishonest wealth, who will trust you with true wealth? If you are not trustworthy with what belongs to another, who will give you what is yours? No servant can serve two masters. He will either hate one and love the other, or be devoted to one and despise the other. You cannot serve both God and man. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise be to you, Lord Jesus Christ. No servant can serve two masters. He will either hate one and love the other, or be devoted to one and despise the other. You cannot serve both God and mammon. These words are taken from today's Holy Gospel, according to St. Luke. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. To you, my dear brothers and sisters in Christ Jesus, I would say that the common theme for today is dishonesty. We see it in the Old Testament from the writings of Amos the prophet. We see it in again with the writings of Paul to Timothy. And finally, we see it in the gospel of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. I remember one thing that my grandmother would teach. And she would say in Polish, Zawsze pamiętaj, bo, bo Bóg zawsze widzi, which is translated, always remember, God sees everything. And so, in our world, there is dishonesty. There are people who lie. There are people that bear false witness. And there are others that are thieves and steal from others. We are told that this is an abomination to God. 
You know, people are driven by their egos. And there are times that with man being driven by one's own ego, that they forget about the things that God has entrusted to them. How easy it is to be dishonest in front of other people. How difficult it is for one to live a righteous life. Paul, in writing to Timothy, he says that there is a, only one mediator between God and man, and that was Jesus Christ. You know, we see in the gospel that Jesus became angry. There are some scholars that say that he actually became angry twice in the temple, where he overturned the tables, where he took whip, a whip and he actually drove out the money changers. Those who had come to the temple to offer their gift unto God. And so, my dear brothers and sisters, the lessons for today is always remember that God sees everything. He knows the hearts of each and every single one of us. He knows those who are honest and those who are dishonest. And in our dealings with the world, we will come across dishonest people. It is called an abomination to the Lord. No man can serve two masters. Either he'll love the one and hate the other, or cleave to the one and despise the other. You cannot despise, you cannot serve both God and mammon. Other scripture passages would say you cannot serve God in worldliness. And the third is that you cannot serve God in money. There seems to be a, a division that takes place when we are called to God to live by the gifts of the Spirit and to walk worthily in the calling that was made. And so Paul says, I was appointed a preacher and apostle and that I am speaking the truth. He was a teacher in faith and in truth. And throughout his entire life, once he was converted, Paul strove to always do the right thing. My dear brothers and sisters, we see in the gospel today a dishonest servant who is squandering his master's possessions. The ones that he went to to try to right things, even though he was going to lose his position, they too were dishonest. So he says to the one, how much do you owe my master? And was, one says, basically 100 measures of olive oil. Olive oil was important in those days. We have the luxury of being able to go to the store and find maybe 15 or 20 different olive oils. But in Jesus' time, olive oil was committed, considered a valuable commodity. He says, how much do you owe my master? 100 measures. The steward says, take your promissory note and write 50. He goes to the other and he says, how much do you owe my master? 100 cores of wheat. The steward said, take your promissory note and write 80. It is our understanding that that which was owed to the master was rent. And that the steward did everything he could to try to make things right. In the end, since he was going to lose his position of stewardship, he was found in favor with his master. My brothers and sisters, we are given a certain amount of talents and abilities, and we are called upon to always place God before anything else, because it is in placing God before everything else that we will find favor with God. No man can serve two masters. Either he'll love the one and hate the other, or he will be devoted to one 
and despise the other. You cannot serve both God and worldliness. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. May the name of Jesus Christ be praised now and forever. Amen. Why be he leaving one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen? I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he was born of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in fulfillment of the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. The good man leaves an inheritance to his children's children, but the wealth of the sinner is stored up for the just. Let us pray. 
omniscient Father, receive the offering your people place before you and make us eager to share in the good things you have given us. We ask this through the same Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit. Forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your poor hearts. Thanks unto the Lord our God. It is right to give him and Father, all powerful and ever living God, we do well always and everywhere to give you thanks through your Son Jesus Christ our Lord. You who send us an advocate and a counselor in the person of the Holy Spirit to support us, teach us, and make us holy. Through your Holy Spirit, you give your gifts of grace in every time and season as a guide for your whole church. So therefore, on this day, we join with the voices of angels and archangels with all the saints and the entire church. And we lift our hymn of praise to your glory, repeating unceasingly. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. O Son in the highest, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. O Son in the highest. Please be seated. Most merciful Father, we most humbly pray and ask you through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, to accept and to bless these gifts, these presents, these holy and unspotted sacrifices, which we offer to you in the first place for your holy Catholic Church, that you would guide it in peace, defense, and unity throughout the whole world with its bishops and priests, especially Anthony, our prime bishop, and Paul, our bishop, and all who press the profess the true Orthodox and Catholic faith which comes to us from the Apostles. Remember your servants, O Lord. My brothers and sisters, in our prayers, let us remember the sick, the suffering, and the dying, the hungry, the homeless, and the unemployed, all those who are suffering from the coronavirus and its variants, and pray for not only their health and well-being of those of their families as well. Let us pray this day and give God thanks for the blessings of doctors, nurses, first responders, and all health care workers who strive daily to minister to those less fortunate than they. In our deepest prayers this day, let us remember and pray most fervently for all abused and neglected children in our world, all those abused and neglected animals, all victims of violence both here and abroad, especially keeping in mind the people of Ukraine. Let us also pray for all those who are victims of violence both here and abroad. May we give God our thanks for the blessings of those who serve in our armed forces and pray that God would watch over all of them, protect them by their holy angels, and return them safely back to their homes. And let us also this day pray for all here present whose faith and devotion are known to you, Lord, for whom we offer or who offer up to you the sacrifice of praise for themselves and all their own, for their hope of salvation and deliverance, and who freely choose to serve you, the living, eternal, and true God. We join in communion with and honor above all others the memory of Mary, the glorious Virgin Mother of our Lord and God, Jesus Christ. Also your blessed apostles, martyrs, and confessors, together with all the countless number of saintly men and women of all nations, but especially of our nation, who lived, suffered, and died 
for the glory of your name and the coming of your kingdom. May the remembrance of these praiseworthy people encourage us to follow their heroic example, making us worthy of your grace and love. Through the same Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. After these and other words of the archpriestly prayer and holy fervor, our Savior took bread into his holy and venerable hands, and having lifted his eyes to heaven to you, God, his almighty Father, and giving thanks to you, he blessed it, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat it, for this is my body, which is given for you. In like manner, after supper, taking this excellent chalice into his holy and venerable hands, and again giving thanks to you, he blessed it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the cup of my blood, the blood of the new and everlasting covenant, which shall be shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. As often as you do this, do it in remembrance of me. Wherefore, mindful, O Lord, we, your servants and your faithful people, in remembrance of this Christ, your Son, our Lord, as well as his blessed passion, resurrection, and glorious ascension, we receive from your own gifts and presence a pure offering, a holy offering, an immaculate offering, the holy bread of eternal life, and the chalice of everlasting salvation. gifts we receive with a joyful countenance and from him who is the giver of all temporal and eternal and good gifts with an unshakable faith that they will become for our souls a saving remedy. We humbly ask you, Almighty God, to command that our offering be brought by the hands of your holy angel to your highest altar into the presence of your divine majesty, that we who receive the most sacred body and blood your Son from this altar may be filled with every blessing and grace through the same Christ our Lord. Amen. To these souls, O Lord, and all the rest in Christ, grant we pray in place of refreshment, life, and peace through the same Christ our Lord. Amen. To these souls, O Lord, and all rest in Christ, grant we pray in place of refreshment, light, and peace through the same Christ our Lord. Amen. And grant us, your sinful servants, who hope in the greatness of your mercy, some part in fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs and all your saints who shed their blood for your name. Their hearts were always open to justice and mercy, and with lives patterned after their divine master, merited eternal joy. Number us in their company, Lord, not weighing our merits, but pardoning our offenses. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. By whom you always create, sanctify, revive, bless, and freely give us all these good things. Through him, with him, in him. All honor and glory are yours, Almighty Father, in the unity with the Holy Spirit. Forever and ever. Amen. Let us pray, instructed by our Savior's teaching and following the divine example, we say with confidence, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name.
Deliver us, Lord, from all evil, past, present, and future. And by the intercession of the blessed and glorious Mother of God, Mary, together with your blessed apostles, Peter and Paul, and also Andrew, and all the saints, grant us peace in our day, that being supported by the help of your mercy, we may be free from sin and secure from all disturbance, through the same Jesus Christ, your Son and our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, forever and ever. Amen. May the peace of the Lord be with you always. May this commingling and consecration of the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ help us who receive it to everlasting life. Amen. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, I leave you peace. My peace I give unto you. Look not upon our sins, but upon the faith of your church, and vouchsafe to grant it peace and unity according to your holy will, for you live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, Son of the living God, by the will of the Father and the work of the Holy Spirit, your death brought life to the world, by your holy body and blood, free me from all my sins and from every evil. Keep me faithful to your teaching and never let me be parted from you. Who lives and reigns God forever and ever. Amen. May the partaking of your body and blood, Lord Jesus, not be cause for my judgment or condemnation. Though I am unworthy to receive this great sacrament, through your loving kindness may become my safeguard and healing remedy. Our saving master, awaken in all of us living faith, fervent love, worship, adoration, and the holy longing. Through this communion, make us your willing servants, zealous to fulfill your holy will, and may it at last unite us entirely with you, our Lord and our God. Grant us who lives and reigns with God the Father in the unity with the Holy Spirit forever and ever. Amen. My dear <coughs> brothers and sisters, for those of you who will not be receiving communion sacramentally, let us now offer the act of spiritual communion. Let us pray. Most loving Jesus, I adore you in the most blessed sacrament in which you are truly present. I love you above all things and I long for you in my soul. Since I cannot receive you sacramentally, I ask you to come spiritually into my heart and heal my soul. I embrace you and unite myself with you. May I never be separated from you. Inflame my heart with the fire of your love, my Lord and Savior. Amen. I will take the bread of heaven, and I will call upon the name of the Lord. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you, but only say the word and I shall be healed. May the body of our Lord Jesus Christ preserve my soul unto life everlasting. Amen. What shall I return unto the Lord? For all the graces he hath rendered unto me, I will take the cup of salvation and call upon the name of the Lord. With high praise will I call upon him, and I shall be saved from all my enemies. May the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ preserve my soul unto life everlasting. Amen.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you, but this is the word I shall be Receive the body of the Lord.
but like green leaves the just flourish. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Lord Jesus Christ, you have fed us at your holy table and have blessed us with abundance. Help us to use our riches rightly and generously so that having used perishable things to your glory, we may at last grain the imperishable inheritance of your kingdom. For you live with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. sacrifice which I, the unworthy, have offered up into the sight of your majesty, be acceptable to you, through your mercy may be effective for ourselves and all those for whom we have offered it, through Christ our Lord. Amen. May the Almighty and merciful God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. John. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was in God's presence, and the Word was God. He was present to God in the beginning. Through Him all things came into being, and apart from Him nothing came to be. Whatever came to be in Him found the life, life for the light of men. The light shines on in the darkness, a darkness that did not overcome it. There was a man named John sent by God who came as a witness to testify to the light so that through him all might believe, but only to testify to the light, for he himself was not the light. The real light which gives light to every man was coming into the world. He was in the world, and through him the world was made, yet the world did not know who he was. To his own he came, yet his own did not accept him. Any who did accept him he empowered to become children of God. These are they who believe in his name, who are begotten not by blood, nor by cardinal desire, nor by man's willing it, but by God. The Word became flesh and made his dwelling among us, and we have seen his glory, the glory of an only Son coming from the Father, filled with enduring love. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Amen. Mm -hmm. 